In this video, we're going to learn how to truncate a file in C by using the truncate function inside the POSIX library. So here we've got a file with 20 characters in it. It's got the characters from one to nine, followed by a new line, and then the characters from one to nine, followed by another new line character. And each one of these characters is gonna be one byte in length. So if we look at the length of the file, it's 20 bytes in length. What would happen if we truncated this file down to 10 bytes? We should be left with just this first line here. Let's try that. First, we'll include unistd.h. This is the library where the truncate function is defined. Then we'll call the truncate function like this. Truncate. The first argument is the path to the file, in this case, file.txt. And the second argument is the number of bytes to truncate the file down to. So we'll say 10. So we'll save this and we'll compile our program. And then we'll run it. And if we check out the file, it's now down to that first line. And if we check out the length of the file again, it's now down to 10 bytes. The last modified time is also modified when we call truncate as well. One thing we might wonder is what would happen if we gave as a second argument a number that was larger than the actual number of bytes in the file. So right now this file has 10 bytes in it. We could look at that file in a hex editor to see the raw numbers in that file. So here we see the raw numbers stored in the file that represent each one of those characters. Let's try to change that argument. We'll change it to be 50. So here we'll say 50. So we'll save this, we'll recompile our program, and then we'll run it. Now let's open up our file in the hex editor again. So we'll say open file, file.txt, and what happens is the excess length provided is gonna be padded with zeros. So that's the behavior we'll get in that case. Now if the function is unsuccessful for some reason, it's going to return negative one. If it's successful, it'll return zero. So let's try to detect an error here. We'll say if truncate returns negative one, then we'll print f error followed by a new line. So we'll save this and we'll try to open up a file that doesn't exist. So we have no file called badfile.txt in the current directory. So let's recompile our program here and then run it, and now we get error. Now the truncate function will also set the global ERRNO variable that some library functions use. To use that variable, we have to include the ERRNO.h library. This will give us a more specific code as to what went wrong. We can also use the p error function to report the specific error message as well. So down here now, instead of just outputting error, we're gonna say printf error code percent d backslash n and we're gonna print out ERRNO. That's the global variable that truncate will set to some specific error code when there's an error. We can also call p error and p error is gonna output a more specific error message. And the string we provide here is gonna be a prefix that's added onto that error message. So we'll save this. We'll recompile our program and run it. And now we get error code two, and we get this nice error message, error, no such file or directory. Another type of error that could occur is if we try to truncate a read-only file. So here we've got a file called readonly.txt, and that file has been set to be read-only. Let's try to truncate that file here. So truncate readonly.txt. We'll recompile our program, and we'll run it. And notice now that the error code is one and the error message is operation not permitted. And that's different than what we had before when the file didn't exist. So this is how we can use the truncate function inside the POSIX library to truncate a file in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.